to this bank holiday weekend. Um, now, our next guest has spent his working days writing and editing in the IT industry, but his real passion, writing and editing historical fiction. Uh, Matthew Harvey is from Hilperton. He's just published the third book in his trilogy. It's set in 7th century Britain and is called Blood and Blade. And Matthew has popped in to say hello. 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 Well, obviously, say more than that. It's a very short interview. Yes, so it's just it. coming in to say hello. That's it. Um, now, tell us about um, writing. When did you first get into writing? I started writing the first book in a series, which is um, The Serpent's Sword, back in 2001 on a whim um, after watching a documentary on TV. And it was um, about uh, Northumbria, and it was about... Is that where, yes, where you're from, isn't it? Well, I'm originally from Sussex, oh, right. then I moved to Spain. My parents moved to work in Spain. Um, but sometime in the middle of that, there was a three-year period that I lived in Northumberland. And um, so I saw this um, this documentary, um, and it was about Bamber Castle and about digging up... Um, skeletons on the beach or just near the beach in Banbury Castle and the dunes and they were dated back to the 7th century and something intrigued me about it. I'd always loved the coastline of, of Northumberland and it reminded me of my childhood there and I just started writing and that sort of went on for a while but um, yeah that was when it started but it didn't get published for quite a long time after that. <laughs> but I imagine when that, that first book in the series was published that that I always think for an author, it must be amazing to kind of hold it and see it or see it in a bookshop or something like that. Yeah, it is, it is amazing. And I mean, the, I always wanted to be... So when I finally got round to finishing the, the, the book, because it sort of took a long time, that first one, what with life and um, fa way. family yeah. And, yeah. and work and, and everything else. Um, so when I finally got round to, to writing it, I, I, I wanted to be published and um, I thought, right, OK, what do I do? And I got an agent and I got an agent quite quickly. And I thought at that point, you get an agent and instantly, you know, the next thing, you know, a couple of weeks later, I'll have a book deal. Then I'll have a yacht on the Caribbean and I'll be, <laughs> you know, retiring to, to write there, drinking pina coladas in the sun. Um, of course, that didn't happen. And although the, my agent's very good, after a year of rejections of that first book, I decided that I wasn't just going to put the book in a drawer and forget about it. I'd written the second one by that point, which is called The, the Cross and the Curse. And um, so I decided to self-publish. So you mentioned that I work in, in IT um, in, as a technical writer. So I had some of the skills that were needed to edit and to put the, you know, the stuff together. And so um, I decided I'd heard about um, the, the Fifty Shades of Grey um, success from E.L. James, and she'd sold millions and millions and millions of books. And she'd started um, self-publishing she by self-publishing on, on the, the behemoth that is um, Amazon. And um, so I decided I'd do the same. So I did that. And then about a year later, I'd written then the third book in the series, and I was just about to self-publish the, the second one. Um, and then after selling a few thousand books and becoming a little bit more known, I guess, in the, in the genre and sort of being um, active on social media, then my agent managed to find um, a publisher who were a bit more interested. Um, <laughs> and I'm now um, traditionally published, so it means that the books are out in the in the shops. So tell us about the books, then, because I say they're set in the, the, the seventh century. Yeah. So... It is there historical fact in there? Is it fiction? Is it a mixture? What is it? So it is fiction. Primarily, it's a, you know, I try to make gripping stories that are page turning thrillers, but it is all um, the, the story of the fictional character. The main character is called Beerbrand, and um, he's, a, 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 he's totally fictional. He comes from Kent. Um, and goes up to Northumberland and ends up staying there and joining the king's war band and getting involved in battles and things. But um, the the um, the background and the kings of the time and the battles and all of the the bishops and the the, the political machinations that are going on between the different kingdoms of, of Britain are all real and are all mainly taken from the Anglo-Saxon chronicle and the Venerable Bede's account of the history of the English church and people, which was written in about um, eighth century, I think, so about hundred years later. Um, um, so, yeah, so based in fact, lots of factual stuff, but definitely fiction layered on top of that. And talk about the success you've had, because I said the re the reviews have been amazing for, for, for all the books, uh, particularly the the latest one. Um, but you've, you've got this, your first book, is that right, translated into Russian? Yeah, the first, so, so <laughs> well, one of the benefits of, of getting a, a traditional publisher, so I'm now published by a publisher called Aria, who are part of um, Head of Zeus, um, which is an independent publisher, but um, part of getting this traditional publishing deal that would be more difficult for me 
if I continue to self-publish, is to get things like translation deals. So I'm hoping that it will get translated into more um, to more languages. But yes, yeah, so far the the only translation is um, of the Serpent Sword into Russian, and I believe the title translates to the Devil's Sword. I think they've translated it <laughs> to um, there. But um, yeah, I've got a I've got a, um, a work colleague actually who is uh, Russian, and so I gave him a copy and asked him what he thought. So he told me he hasn't finished it yet. So. <laughs> We're but still he, waiting but he, told me, he told me the translation's good. Though. Oh, it's well, that's good, that's, yeah. that's good, yeah, because otherwise you'd have no idea, would yes, you? They could have put anything. Exactly. Who, yeah. who knew? And with anything like a sort of trilogy, and um, as you say, you've got the same character, Beer Brand is quite sort of melancholic, but you know, a lot of integrity, that kind of character, through the book. Do you Can you just pick it up with Blood and Blade, or do you have to go and read all you, the you can you can just pick it up. I think each book. So I aim to make each book a standalone story, so with a beginning, a middle, and an end. But I think as the series progresses, it's probably a little bit more, uh, you know, richer for a reader if they've read the backstory. But um, but you could definitely pick it up. I mean, I've heard people saying you know, that the later books that they've picked them up there, and then they've gone back and read the previous books. And I don't think it detracts too much. The only thing is, of course, some of the twists that maybe happen in earlier books become obvious you know if you go back and you think well this character doesn't exist anymore i wonder what's <laughs> going to happen to them you know <laughs> so so yeah so read in order if you can but um definitely you could pick it up um, the third one and it should be readable as it is what is it you love about the seventh century then so it's interesting i so i i never planned to write a historical fiction series um and when i started looking into it well, after seeing this documentary and, and researching i i sort of discovered over time that really Britain at the time of the 7th century is like a, a continent in microcosm. You've got the whole, um, you know, the British Isles or Great Britain um, is, is split into multiple small kingdoms and each of those kingdoms is ruled by different kings which are almost just like, um, I look at them as almost like gangsters that have got their sort of band of hoodlums that they go around and they sort of, they go around the, 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 the villages and the farmsteads and they make people pay them um, a, a tribute to keep them safe. So it's very much sort of like gangsters or maybe sort of the Wild West. You've got a frontier with the, with the native Britons that are getting pushed into the into the west so again very much like the sort of the, the the north american west in the in the 19th century and you've got the angles and the saxons they're fighting the the, the native britons who they call the welsh because welsh actually is the anglo-saxon word for foreigner so it's the word they use for everybody that's not them they they use the term welsh it's like an education um, this is yeah. i'm impressed by this i never knew that so um how can we get hold of the books i say blood and blade is is the latest but is it all the usual places I guess? so all the usual places okay. um it should be available in all the high street shops and if you can't find the books um in the high street then please um order them in they should be you know they can order them and of course online in all the usual places they're available as audio books as well so if people have got um, audible or other ways of listening to audio books they can do that as well and of course you've got a website matthew you Harfy, which is H A R F F Y, is that right? That's right, yes. Dot com. Matthew, thanks for coming in. Congratulations on that. And, and do keep us up to date with how it's all going. Thank you very much. Um, I, 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 I can see this as a movie. Would you love it? I, I, how, well, how come great on, would that how be? How great would that be? I'm Anne's new agent now. I will sort that out. It's brilliant. An HBO series would be lovely. It would be lovely, <laughs> wouldn't it? Matthew, thank you so much. We're gonna, you're going to celebrate now with a glass of mead, I imagine, with the success of the books. <laughs> Matthew Harfy, thanks so much from Hilperton. <laughs> and of course, so all available at the usual outlets for his new book. <laughs> 22 minutes to 10, it's BBC Wiltshire, The Morning Show. If you're planning a journey on the train, there's certainly great western trains into London.